Um, so uh, this is kind of like a, like a nice hotel a view at, um, out of our room. And uh, we're going to be talking about like graphing, slopes, all that kind of stuff. So I figured if you know it, well, you don't need to watch this video. If you don't know about all that stuff, well, then you can watch this video. Why not? So also uh, about slope and, and all that other stuff. Well, you just spoke. I'll, I'll teach you about it. So, uh, so when you're graphing linear, uh, when you're graphing, or here we're graphing linear equations and stuff. Um, uh, over here, uh, uh, to uh, to make a linear equation or to uh, to graph, uh, we uh, we use the equation y equals m x plus b. Now, uh, I'll explain all of this later, uh, but I'll give you a little like sort of like a little introduction. Uh, so y and x are coordinates, right? There are coordinates on the on, on the coordinate plane, the x y coordinate plane. Uh, so y and x are coordinates. So we know y and x. Well, eventually we know y and x if we're given those coordinates. And then for m here, uh, for m right here, well, m is the slope. And I'll talk about all the slope later, but, but we can figure out m using y and x, using something called rise over a run. Now, so, so now we know y, also uh, we know y and x, which we do know, well then we can figure out m. So we now we know y, x, and m. Well, b is called the y-intercept. Now, y-intercept is pretty simple, you know it, but um, again, I t I'll talk about that later. Uh, so the equation above is called the slope-intercept form of a linear equation, and m is called the slope of the equation, and b is the y-intercept. Pretty much what I just said. So, also this is what well, I, I figure. Well, you're not, well, you're kind of advanced enough to know this, so I'll move on to this side. Also, here it says um, the slope of the graph of the linear equation in its rise is uh, is rise over its run. Now, rise over run, a uh, uh, rise is in a, is in a line. But to get from one point to this point, how much you go up or down. It doesn't really matter how much you go up and then how much you go right. So if you have a line that's like this, two points on a line, say our line is going through these two points, and then we go up three and over four. Well, then that means uh, that slope is a rise, which is how much you go up and how much you go over. Run, four. So rise over run, three over four, or three quarters. So the line, uh, so the slope of this would then be three quarters. Now, instead of using hands, uh, uh, oh, we can look at this book. So we see that working from left to right. Now, and then that means that if we have a line, I'll use this picture, uh, say our line looks like this. And then we pick two points on the line to find the slope. And well, of course you're gonna probably pick integer points since well, I guess you can use non-integer points, but who wants to do that when you have nice simple integer points. So let's say I have, I want this point, in this one. I want the slope between these two points. Well, then that's rise over run. How much you go up and how much you go over. So this is to get from this point to this point. Well, then you have to go up, uh, up one, and then you have to go to the right one. So that's, uh, so that's rise one, run one. So one divided by one, which means this line has a slope of one. Or m, the slope has, uh, m, the slope is one in this line. And now you might be thinking, well, why can't we go from uh, saying these two points, saying two points, say I pick uh, this point, sorry, this point, and this point again. And then I want to go, well, then here I can go to the, and here I can go to the left one. Well, to, well, to, well if we're going to the left, well, that means negative one, right? So it's left is negative. And then we're going to go down one. Well, we're going down, and that's also negative. So negative one over negative one, well, rise over run, negative one, negative one. And then that means, well, it's still one. So in here, it doesn't really matter where on uh, its rise over the run. So, uh, so either way, this slope is one, but of course, well, of course, it's going to work from left to right. Now, and now I can see why are oh, we going to work from left to right in this line over here. M is the slope negative one third. Well, why is that? Well, this is because, well, again, we have, let's say we pick two points on a line. Two points on a line. I'll pick 
um, this point, and so this is another inch point. This point and that, these two points. And well, here, well, they get from here to here. Oh, you go down one, which is negative one. Now, so the rise here is negative one. And now, I guess it's called rise, but you're not really rising up, but it's still called the rise. It's not called a negative rise or something. Uh, so, uh, it's still rise, rise one, uh, <laughs> sorry, rise negative one. And then, so we're gonna go down one and then over three, the right three, which is negative one, rise, divided by three, run. Negative one over three, neg uh, negative one third, negative one third slope. And now, you know, this is where we can't really use um, uh, the, uh, the run over rise thing, because here, here look, to get from this point here, to this point here, it's the same two points, well then I, I can go to the, uh, here I can go to the left, three, which is negative three, and then go up one, up is uh, one, right? Negative three divided by one. Negative three, that's different slope, okay? So I guess here you can use run over, uh, a run over rise, but here it's negative three over one. That's totally different from negative one over three. Since since you're doing run, which is how much you go, uh, oh, which is how much you go left in this case, and then how much you're going up, which is a negative, which is one. So here, that's why you have to work from the left to right. So that way, uh, since I say, uh, since I, uh, since if I say, oh, the slope of this line is negative three over uh, over one, negative three. And then you say, well, this is negative one over three. We have negative one third slope. Well, then this is the same line, right? But we say different slopes. So so that means, who knows if we're right? So we have to work from left to, to right, left to right, to make sure that we don't have any kind of difference or anything. Now, these two are basically the same thing, so I don't want to waste any time talking about these two lines. And if you want, you can pause this video and figure out why the slopes are negative two and and three halves and so next and then and then here of course you can also determine the slope of the line without a graph so you're not going to draw that line draw the graph and all that now since we have something called point slope point now to top to find the rise we subtract the y coordinates of the run and we subtract the y and then we subtract the x coordinates now that means so we have uh two points on a line seven negative two and negative four negative one so so, so so we have these two points and then and then of course the line passes through those and then we want the slope of that line so well the final slope of the of the line that passes through these two together that means well, we subtract uh, we, we subtract the y coordinates and then subtract the x coordinates so uh so y2 over uh, minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So here, well, y2 negative one minus y1, which is negative two over, um, uh, oh, which is one over x2 negative four minus x1, seven, so negative 11 which means that's which means the slope of that line is negative one over 11. So now why does it have to be y2 minus y1? Can we do y1 minus y2 over x2, over x, uh, x2 minus x1? Let's think about that. Uh, y1 minus y2, y1 minus y2, Seven. I'll see that here. Seven minus a uh, y. Oh, sorry. No, sorry. I'll just the exponents. Negative two minus. I guess I do make mistakes. Um. Y a uh, y one negative two. Negative two minus y one. Oh, uh, what y two? Negative one, a little more clearly, over x1 minus x2. So x1 
7 minus 2. And I get a 4. Well, this right over here, well, this is to negative 2 minus, uh, minus negative 1, negative, uh, yeah, negative 1, and 7 plus 4 is, uh, is 11. So negative 1 over 11 is negative 1 over 11. So both ways work, right? Um, y2 minus y1 and y1 minus y2, and of course, x is the same thing. But here's what we can't do. What we can't do is think, okay, so we have y1 minus y2, and then x, and then, yeah, y1 minus y2, and then, and then x2 minus x1. So we can't have this. Like that out for you really quick. Also, you see how these are opposite? Y1 and X2, Y2 and X1. So you can't have Y1 minus Y2 and X2 minus X1. Those are different things. And we well, had to find out the hard way by doing it this way and, and, and then missing that question. And then, and then thinking again, well, this is Y1 minus, well, so on and so forth. And so, and so whatever, so whatever order you subtract the y coordinates, you have to do the same order of subtracting x coordinates. So, so, so you have to have the two coordinates, and if you subtract the first coordinate, y coordinate, minus the second y coordinate, well then, you, well then you have to do the first x coordinate minus the second x coordinate. You can't do the, the opposite way around. So that's that thing. On the next page, and the intercepts, well, intercepts of the graph are the points where the line of an equation crosses the x and y axis. And the x-intercept occurs where the line crosses the x-axis. Which means when, meaning if this is the line we have, well then the, well then the x-intercept be when this line crosses of the x-coordinate, which is that point right there. Now that point right there is 0, is 0, 6. And here the y-intercept well, the y, uh, sorry, six, zero, and then the y-intercept here is when that uh, is when that line crosses of uh, the y-coordinate. Now, that where that line crosses the y-coordinate is right there. So zero five. So the so of uh, this line, of uh, the y of uh, the x-intercept is six zero, and the y-intercept is zero five. Now sometimes or probably even better, the intercepts are often given as a single coordinate. So that means, since we see that one coordinate here is always zero, since, well, it's going to be on the x-axis, meaning one under the y-coordinate or the x-coordinate, one of those is going to be zero. So we can just say, well, the uh, well, the x-intercept is six, and the y-intercept is five, so the zero is just right on the x-coordinate or the y-coordinate. So, so to find the intercept of an equation without graphing, since we have to have that, since well, then you don't have to have to like graph out like all these lines and all that kind of stuff. Well, to find it without graphing, you can set the opposite coordinate to zero and solve for the resulting equation. So that means, again, I'll just solve the opposite coordinate to zero, right? Since, well, like we said, one coordinate is always going to be zero. So, coming back here, this, now we can see why, why, B is the y-intercept since since well, if we set the opposite coordinate to zero, right? Which is x. So y equals zero times m, which is zero plus b or b. So y equals b. A y is the y-coordinate, and well, the given sometimes the intercepts are often given as a single coordinate. Or in other words, uh, the y-coordinate is uh, b is the y-intercept. So now that's why I said B is the y-intercept way back there. So now this is probably a long video, so I figured why not we take a little break and I and I get a little bit of water and you maybe stop listening to this all this 10-minute nonsense and then you clear your brain and then we'll come back next time.